Good afternoon. Today I'm sitting with Pastor Chris Whitehead. We are sitting in the the Student Center at Charter Oak Church. Very nice to meet you. Thank you for making time for me. Although we've bumped into each other time and time again, but sure. it's good to actually sit down with you. And how long have you been here at the Charter Oak Church? I became one of the pastors here in 2005. 2005, so it's been a while. I'll be starting my 20th year at the end of May. Excellent. Congratulations. What's the address here? 449 Fry Farm Road in Greensburg, Pennsylvania. And the times of your services? Uh, 815 is traditional, 945 and 1115 are contemporary at okay. this campus. At this campus. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that. I was going to, now this is not, how would, how would I describe this? A franchise or a, a, a multi-site? Multi-site. And you have other sites where? So we are one church in multiple locations here in Unity Township. Uh, in Southwest Greensburg, that's our Crossroads campus on South Main Street in Greensburg. Mm -hmm. Our Jeanette campus, which is next to the police station in downtown Jeanette. And our Mount Pleasant Scottsdale campus, which is in the YMCA in Mount Pleasant. All right. And is it all one teaching or, or do you have several teachers at each place? Each, each campus has live teaching, but we're all teaching the same things. So we're walking through the Gospel of Matthew just verse by verse, chapter by chapter, and we're all doing the same each week. I assume the streaming comes from here. They're, it's live there. Oh, it's live. It's, the pastors are preaching live. Oh, they're all preaching. Different pastors are preaching at the same time. Yes. Okay, I misunderstood. Yes. Okay, very good. Uh, and there's room for growth, I understand. Right, yes. <laughs> yes, you just have the, one of the most expans expanding ministries that I've ever seen. Our, our goal is to have 10 campuses by 2035. Well, I have no doubt to reach that goal. With God blessing you. Yeah, that's a very reasonable goal. And, and I was, this is a compliment, but I was here earlier trying to take a picture of the facility. It was hard to do because the facility here on uh, Fry Farm Road mm -hmm. is so big, it's hard to get the whole thing in, a, in the camera. Plus, there's no bad angle. It all, it all looks very nice and very well kept. Thank you. It's one thing to have a huge facility. It's another thing to, to keep up with it and maintain it. I'm sure that's a full-time job. Cool. We have great staff, amazing people that God has brought onto our team, and they make it uh, run very smoothly. That's excellent. Yeah. What do you think the challenges are in western Pennsylvania, Westmoreland County, in bringing the gospel to the unsaved? Yeah, I mean, I think that um, I grew up in this area, and I would say, you know, I grew up in a, a Christian home, but I certainly wouldn't have said that I was biblically literate or even had a real understanding of what salvation meant. Uh, and so just trying to get to the basics and get to a place where people have a biblical worldview and mm -hmm. are filtering their decisions through the lens of what did Jesus do? How did Jesus live? What did he say? And modeling and living our lives after, after Jesus as our Lord and our Savior. People have described these days as being very uncertain and very dire. Do you think that will bring people more easily to Christ? Or does, do you think it, they're, they're so fed up and they're so disillusioned that it pushes them away? Sure, that's a great question. I think that uh, when people are, are hurting, they, they look for hope. And the, if they can find a place of hope, they will land there and they will pursue that hope. Uh, that a lot of people I don't think necessarily look to the church for that um, for a variety of reasons, whether it's because they grew up in a, in a church and it did really just, they never took ownership of their faith or it, it never really meant anything for them uh, personally. And they walked away from their faith and they gave up on the church or they got hurt by the church for a variety of reasons, or they just you know, have become so self made that think, well, why do I need anybody else? Why would I need the church if I'm doing fine myself? Mm -hmm. And they may be hurting on the inside, uh, looks great on the outside, uh, but they're hungering for something more in their life. And they don't realize, I don't think that they have a God-shaped hole in their soul that only can be filled by Jesus. And our job is, our responsibility is to help people to, to recognize that mm -hmm. uh, and to realize there's a hungering, a thirsting deep inside of them um, they're made in the image of God. Everyone is made in the image of God, mm -hmm. and we want to help them to become children of God through faith in Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I understand you're doing very well with that. Uh, what, what do you think that? Um, what do you think is is the number one reason people are hurt by church, or, or mm -hmm. they need to be they need to be um, uh, they need to recover from church experiences? Sure. I think that because Jesus is perfect and He lived a perfect life, that 
uh, they expect everybody who are followers of Jesus to be perfect. Mm -hmm. And we're not. Yeah, <laughs> we're, no. we're, we're sinners yes. and we're broken people. And we, we want grace to be extended to us, but sometimes we find it difficult to extend grace to other people because we've been hurt. And so hurt people hurt people. And so we want to we, we keep people at a distance so that we don't get hurt again. And really the the life of Jesus is about inviting people in and loving people yeah. right where they are. And that's, you know, that take, takes risks. It takes a, a, taking a risk on our part to open ourselves up, to be mm -hmm. vulnerable, to be humble. Uh, and that we, when you've been burned, it's really challenging to do that. And so we want to provide a place that, you know, is a safe place for people to discover that no matter who you are or what your past looks like, uh, Jesus loves you and so do we. And we're here to become more like Jesus together. And through the ups and downs, I mean, just being a part of a church is messy and we embrace that messiness. Yes. <laughs> you have really no choice. Right. Uh, you can't run from it because it always follows you. Right. Yeah. So uh, if I were to come here on a Sunday morning, what could I expect? Yeah. I mean, there's going to, we have kids ministry, we have a nursery, um, and then we have two styles of worship here at this campus. Uh, we have traditional worship at 815 with hymns and uh and then at uh, 945 and 11, and then at all of our other campuses, it's contemporary worship where it's guitars and drums and keyboard and, and singing um, contemporary music that you would hear on, you know, on the radio. Oh, very good. Very good. Uh, uh, what are your plans for the future as far as uh, um, uh, what, what, what you're preaching right now? Do you have any uh, preaching series that any, any other ministries you'd like to uh, to start here. Yeah, I mean, we're preaching through the Gospel of Matthew right now. Right. And so we're in Matthew chapter 14 right now, and we're just, we've been in it for about 18 months. We've probably got about 11 months to go. Uh, so it just, <laughs> well, there's a lot there. It is, like verse by verse. Do you prefer, yeah. do you prefer verse by verse uh, preaching, or would you rather do like contemporary issues? Every once in a while, we'll do a, a, a little break where we'll mm -hmm. touch base on a contemporary issue. Um, we have a Later on, the, towards the end of the summer, we're looking at a you know, Matthew. I think it's Matthew 18, maybe um, or 17. That talks. Jesus talks about marriage and divorce. We're like, hey, should we do maybe a, something about marriage? Should we do a conference or mm -hmm. do something for singles? Because um, I think the church oftentimes talks and lifts up marriage really high. Um, but we have a lot of singles. We have a lot of young adults here, and so like, we don't want them to think, well. We'll take care of you once you get married. No, we want to help right. them. Yeah, you're not really us. you're not really welcomed unless you're you come in a pair, right, or with a family. And so we're trying to you know, change that that mindset that you know people who are married or single uh, are or divorced or whatever right. are are welcome here. Very good. Now, being that you've been here twenty on going on twenty years, right. you're actually on the other side of things because I think the average stay is of a pastor is just three or four years. I mean, that's pretty good for 20 years. Uh, what would you tell yourself if you could go back mm. 20 years ago, what advice would you give yourself? Oh gosh, that is a great question. Um, I would say, uh, don't take myself so seriously. Don't, that's a good one. Uh, yeah. don't be, don't run ahead of God. Uh, mm. There's a pandemic coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that would have been nice to know yeah. <laughs> at a time. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, I and mean, I think just people, 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 gospel, gospel, gospel. Right. It could just if you keep the gospel at the center and make it all about helping people to get the gospel and to live out the gospel, like right. that's like we're gonna love people to Jesus, uh, and we're not gonna judge people to Jesus. We're going to love them to Jesus. And that's what we have to do. If I had a time machine and go back, I know the very in fact, it's really the only thing I'd say, stop worrying. Yeah. It'll be okay. Right. Yeah. It's just going to be okay. Right. Yeah. Now, other than the Lord above, of course, uh, who, uh, on this earth, who, who influenced you to, uh, who gave you the little push to go into the ministry or, mm. or was that all just from self? Was that all just yeah. the Holy spirit working in you? Um, whenever I, First got married. I mean, I was a brand new believer. But, yeah. You know, I gave my life to Jesus when I was 21, and uh, got my wife and I moved to North Carolina. We got married, and we found a a little church, a little church down there, 
Um, and well, just, anything's a little church. <laughs> <laughs> Any church is a little church compared to this. But I'm but, sorry. No, that's no, okay. Uh, and I just started, I was so on fire for Jesus. And I was just like, put me in coach. And mm -hmm. so I just started doing student ministry, started doing teaching in student ministry and small groups. And uh, and then someone's like, hey, you want, you want, the pastor's going on vacation. You want to preach? And I'm like, I've been a I've been a believer for like 13 seconds. I don't know if I should do yeah. that. And they're like, just give it a try, give it a try. And so I did. People are like, I think you might have a call to ministry. And I was just going back to college after. Well, getting, apparently they were right. Uh, yeah. yeah, I didn't think so. Uh, but I was a computer science major, um, and so I was in college, and uh, I was like, I'm not going to be some poor preacher. I, I want to be some rich millionaire computer guy. Uh, but keep people kept saying, I think you have a call to ministry. I think you have a call to ministry. And I fought it and fought it and. I uh, finally gave in and said, okay, you know, God, if that's what you're calling me to do. That was back in 1994 mm -hmm. and got my first church down in North Carolina and haven't looked back since. That's awesome. Yeah. If the average churchgoer, a member of your church, would follow you around from Sunday to Sunday, what do you think they would be surprised at? What do you think that you spend your time on that they would, that they never realize? Hmm. Well, I think... I don't know if they would be surprised. I'm in a lot of meetings. Yes, I, no, no, I'm, I'm sure you are. So I'm just, I, you know, we have four campus pastors. And so my, my job is to, to disciple and to lead the pastors, mm -hmm. to pastor the people uh, and just and the whole, just working on the strategic aspect of our, our church. And then, you know, Wednesday is all day sermon writing just research and praying and, and writing all day long. Um, and in the evenings doing, or the late afternoons doing counseling for premarital counseling or marriage counseling, or people are just going through a difficult time. Uh, so it's a- Those Sundays uh, never stop. Right. Yeah. Sunday's <laughs> so, always coming. Yeah, there's always another Sunday coming you have right. to get ready yes. for. Right. Well, we're at the end of the uh, interview, but I'm just gonna hand it over to you. I want you to just encourage the people or give them your favorite Bible verse or just say anything that the Lord is laying on your heart. Uh, the interview's all yours right. now. Yeah. Well, I would just say thank you for watching this video and thank you, Dave, for putting this together. So, and I, I think we're, we're all looking for, for purpose and we're all looking for meaning in our lives. Um, but the, the only way that we can really truly find it is through faith in Jesus. And you know, there's, a, there's a lot of things out there on the, the internet that you can watch videos like this and some of it's good and some of it's not. And um, I would encourage you to, to look for the things that are, are rooted in God's word um, so that you can root your life in God's word. And um, no matter what you're going through, they're, they're, whether it's our church or it's Dave's church or someone else's church, like, there are people out there that will love you and, and point you um, to, to Jesus in a way that is life-giving, that is hope-filled, that um, is really encouraging and grace-filled. And if you don't have a church home, then I would highly, highly encourage you to find one, a place where you can find community and, and meaning and purpose and that you can do the same for others. And it's not just about receiving, but it's also about um, giving to others um, what's being poured into you. So just thank you so much for spending this time with us. You have encouraged me, sir. I appreciate that very much. And God bless you, as I'm sure he has in the past, and he will in the future. And God bless you for watching.